controversial point-to-point -point speed cameras are being switched on for all vehicles, cracking down on some of the state's most notorious highways. They're already being used on trucks. Now cars are being watched as well, hoping to reduce the soaring road toll. And just like that, 10 days since I came out with the video of Australia wants to lower your speed limits, they're introducing point-to-point -point cameras. And who knows what's next on this crazy woke agenda. So you got to listen, guys. we got to get the word out and we got to stop this nonsense from seriously happening. It's crazy. This is clown world. It's clown world Australia, sadly. The state's speed camera network about to be expanded. The latest response to the growing carnage from speeding on our roads. Over the last five years, more than 600 people have been killed in crashes where speeding was a factor. To slow all drivers down, cameras recording average speeds. They'll measure your speed over that period rather than simply at a point in time. Up till now, only used on trucks. The government wants them snapping cars. Now, I actually really enjoy driving in Sydney. I hate the roads, I hate the traffic, but I've always thought they had the best speed camera rules where you have to have the signage and they just sort of don't have that many, you know, there's no hidden cameras really. And it was more police on the roads, which whether you like that or you don't like that, I think is a better option. But, now, we were talking about this just 10 days ago, last week. Road toll deaths apparently climbing. Well, so is the population, Einstein. Um, <laughs> nevertheless, now New South Wales is introducing these point-to-point -point cameras so they can monitor your speed, so they can big brother you and check how fast Johnny was driving on the highway. And I don't know about you, I just do not like these cameras. And previously... They've had them set up for years, but they've only been for trucks. And it's kind of pointless because trucks generally, they're speed limited anyways to around like 90Ks, 100Ks. But to me, it seems like they've had this infrastructure in play because they would have spent major dollars on this so that they can eventually roll this out. And uh, I mean, it just seems to fit their narrative, doesn't it? They keep pounding you guys with the media, road tolls, soaring, you know, speed, road tolls, road tolls, speed, crashes, blah, blah, like propaganda machine is going off crazy right now. And let me just tell you guys, speed is like, it's the most minute factor. It is seriously inattentiveness, looking at your phone and just sheer incompetence. Like we have third world driver training here like we are not getting our people trained properly and driver education should be their first priority instead of doing all this nonsense oh let's put more revenue raising cameras here and revenue raising cameras there and blah 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 simply just get the dickheads into driver's education and start teaching anyone who comes to this country anyone who wants a license in this country to mandatorily go to a high-level driver's education program, which shouldn't be that hard. Because I see it countless times again here driving where we're merging onto freeways at like 60 k's an hour, which is incredibly dangerous. Just people just seem to go, I turn now, and they just hook it across three lanes, and they can't even bloody park in the shops. Literally. This is the nonsense that's going to really actually add to a road toll. Not the casual guy who's doing 5, 10 Ks over the limit on the highway. It's madness. Let alone, we've got some of the slowest speeds already globally. Like, majority of our highways are like 100 Ks max. Yeah, 110 globally is extremely slow. Um, yeah, go to Dubai, go into... Um, Germany, you know, even in America, America has like 140 kilometer per hour highways. Like it's pretty normal. And same with Dubai. You can go, you know, Middle East. I've seen 160 kph speed limits on some of their highways. Like 130, 140 is like super normal for them. And yeah, Germany, obviously unlimited highway. Uh, yeah. Australia, mate, we're lucky to get over 100 k's an hour. Lucky. The results for trucks have been very, very impressive. And I think that's left us uh, thinking, 
given the rising road toll, uh, we're really obliged to have this trial. Uh, the figures for trucks, uh, we're in the stretches of road in regional New South Wales where these cameras have been enforcing. We've seen fatalities for heavy vehicles drop by more than half, drop by 53% on those stretches of road. That's obviously over a longer period of time. There may be other factors at play, but with that evidence in front of us, uh, we felt it was really important to take this step, this trial, uh, in two locations. So here's the other big problem I have with this, because as we can see the road minister here talking on about how this has been a tremendously successful program, apparently. You know, they got to justify their jobs here. They, the researchers, the ministers, you know, just these nobodies who are doing nothing. They got to justify the position. And this guy's going to sit here with a straight face and say he's preaching how great of a job he's done with this monitoring trucks and these average point-to-point -point speed cameras. And we've seen such a reduction in truck crashes. Bro, <laughs> truck drivers, it's a profession. Like, there's a little bit of seriousness when you're a truck driver, number one. And number two, half of them are limited to, again, 90 or 100 k's an hour if they're lucky. So they're not going to be speeding regardless. Like, comparing a truck, which can be way over 60 tons, like some of these B-doubles, I think they get up to like over 60 tons, man. It's crazy. And they're going to say, oh, well, the brand new passenger car with high performance brakes and blah, blah, blah. Like, it just does not compute, man. You can't compare a B-double to a like a brand new Toyota. Like it, it just, it's incomparable. You can't even come close. It's like, um, you know, you get the brand new Ducati, Super Sport, whatever, or you're driving some 1980s moped. Like they're not even on the same playing field and you're going to try and put them in the same category. It's wrong. And it, again, it comes to training people who drive on the road to understand the road rules, the road etiquette. Truckers, they shouldn't be in the fast lane on, you know, multi-lane freeways. And it's people going slowly in the right lane. Legitimately, you're doing 80 Ks an hour in the right lane. Someone who's doing the speed limit is probably, you know, especially if he's distracted, he's going to come right up and it's smoke you in the back. That's, that's not, and that's not really, I mean, yeah, it's his fault for running to the back of you. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to say that, but it's crazy that, we can have people and say it's socially acceptable to do 20 Ks under the limit in the fast lane, which is meant to be for passing only. You should not be going slower than the posted speed limit in that lane. Uh, it's just mind boggling. And again, the amount of times you're trying to merge in this country and it is just shocking. Like people slow and people hit the brakes trying to merge here instead of speeding. Like, if they had gone to driver's education, they would have told them that when you merge, it is legitimately the only time that you can flat foot the pedal and get to 100 k's an hour or whatever the speed limit of that highway is as quickly as possible so you can match the flow of traffic and zipper in. Not sit there, barely doing 60, 70 k's an hour, looking and like clogging the whole lane and just saying, I turn right now and just causing an accident. That's, that's what happens, you know? And um, then people have to slam on their brakes, causes a whole chain reaction. That's the bad news. That's what actually can cause serious crashes, especially on motorways. And yeah, these cameras are going to do zero. You know what the, you know, the only thing these cameras are going to do? Fill the coffers for these politicians because it is ridiculous that they seem to constantly just drive this narrative of cameras equal safer roads and more money as well. So, you know, it's a bonus for them. It's a win-win. We look like the good guys because we're slowing people down. And hey, if you accidentally go a couple of Ks too fast, we're going to pocket the rest. You know what I mean? And it's like, that's, this is the low, this is the slimy scumball move that, these Australian governments keep pumping and we just seem to accept it. We're just sitting here going, yep, hitting it on the chin, hitting it on the forehead. Like we're copying it everywhere. And again, we can't just sit here and say this is acceptable because the news 
it's it's a propaganda machine, guys. This thing is only going to say what the government wants you to hear, and and you're like, you know, they keep saying you know, rising road toll. Again, I'm going to say it again. What about the rising immigration, guys? The rising growth of the population. Of course, we're going to see some more road tolls when you're not training our drivers properly, importing a huge mass of people, and most of them come from places with very poor driving. You know, zero education is done in a lot of those countries. So the fact that they get here, they do this dinky little driver's test, and then apparently they're sweet. Man, we better wake up. As we've researched uh, community attitudes to this or talked to, for example, the NRMI, they've made the point people generally feel this is a fair way to do it. 68% of people feel this is a fair way to check people's speed on the road. 68% of people, eh? I wonder where they got that number from. Like, who was the who was the pool source that they were asking these questions? Like, Melbourne universities or, or what? Because I guarantee you it was not 68% who say, yes, give me average speed cameras. Give me, give me, give me. No, absolutely not. That is an absolute lie. And this guy is just, oh, man, ridiculous. Uh, the figures for trucks, uh, we're in the stretches of road in regional New South Wales where these cameras have been enforcing. We've seen fatalities for heavy vehicles drop by more than half, drop by 53% on those stretches of road. That's obviously over a longer period of time. There may be other factors supply. <laughs> and listen to this worm. He's legitimately trying to sideline you and he's saying, look, there may be different factors in play and over the longevity is it, but he's trying to say that these cameras reduced truck driver deaths by 50%. Get lost. Absolutely get lost, bro. You are squirming in, s that is the most, oh man. Absolutely other factors are at play here. This guy is off his tree, man. So there it is, guys. I just wanted to jump on and tell you guys again that we got to stand up to this nonsense because, yeah, it was only 10 days ago, roughly, that I came out with this speed camera debacle of the soaring road tolls. Just trying to scaremonger you all. Don't feed into it. And, um, yeah, driver's education, guys. It's pure, pure and simple. These speed cameras have to go. We really need to get rid of them in all states and um, just start training people better. Um, courtesy on the roads road education, driver's education, and uh, if you don't make the grade, you don't get the license. That's what I think. But uh, anyways, if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, consider subscribing, leave a comment down below. We'll see you on the next one.